Well, now that deadline day has passed, the summer transfer window is over, which means I am now officially working with the real-life Everton squad. Make of that what you will, but it's actually been a decent start to the season. Hopefully Football Manager is not hearing that right now, because we've got some big, big teams that we've got to come up against in the next few games. Hello and welcome back to the FM24 Early Access with Everton Episode 3. My name is Craig and coming up on today's episode we have two much tougher challenges in terms of Premier League teams. We're at home against Aston Villa and away in the Merseyside derby against Liverpool. I wonder how well that's going to go. Now since you were last with me, uh, apart from the transfer window officially closing, we'll come to that in a moment. We have actually had a decent start to the season since that opening day defeat against Tottenham. Yes, a 2-2 draw at home against Sheffield United did not fill me with much confidence, but then successive wins against Luton, Crystal Palace in the Cup, Brentford, and then a smashing of Burnley 7-0, including a James Tarkovsky hat-trick, which blew my mind in the opening half, uh, sorry, opening first half. This was kind of tempered a little bit by a 3-1 defeat against Nottingham Forest away from home, which is disappointing, but... I figured it's going to be quite up and down with this Everton squad this season. That does mean that after six games, we are sitting ninth in the table. Other teams have played games before us this weekend. We are playing on a Sunday, and I've just realised it's not even match day. What am I doing? Of course, just before we go any further, this is the first episode I am recording since episode one came out on Monday. So I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported this series of the opening episode and the channel so far as well. Obviously there have been no videos coming out for over a month so to see so many people coming out in support uh, of the opening episode so far has been brilliant to see. Can I just ask uh, if you make sure that you hit the like button down below, smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss the upcoming episodes of this series that will be coming out throughout the early access period and also just above my head now as well will be episode one just in case you haven't seen it or just yet so a good chance to catch up on the series episode one and episode two by the time this video comes out and then come back and watch as we play Aston Villa and Liverpool so before we get into those two games while I'm still moving forward <laughs> through the uh, day while I try and get to the match day itself Transfer history-wise, all the real-life transfers in and out of the club have officially finished. Which means that any transfers that are made from here on out will be my transfers. Apart from, of course, Kiernan, Dewsbury Hall and Jamie Vardy. We went through those in the last episode. They are my transfers. They're not playing for Everton in real life. I believe they're still at Leicester, actually, in the Championship. So the fact I'm getting the tune out of them in the Premier League is actually significantly awesome. Uh, Ashley Young... Uh, Arno Danjuma, Yusuf Chimiti, uh, Jack Harrison, Beto have all of that, and Fraser Barnes label. He's, he's a goalkeeper who's sitting in my under 21s. No one cares about him right now. Sorry, Fraser. Uh, he, they have come into the first team squad. Beto is a 25 year old Portuguese striker. Uh, it's three and a half star current ability, the same amount of potential. He scored one goal in three league games. He's also scored in the Cups, so. Settling in okay. Jack Harrison, he's only made one appearance for me, not in the league, but in the cup, because he arrived injured. The story of our season so far, we've had so many injuries. Yusuf Chimiti, he is in our under-21s because he is apparently not good enough yet. Leading Skybet League 1 player. Yeah, whether you see him or not is kind of debatable. Dan Juma, you would have seen in the last episode. Uh, players who have left, the likes of Damari Gray, Neil Morpé, thank goodness. Alex Awobi, who got injured anyway, Tom Cannon, Mason Holgate, and one of our youngsters in Francis Okonkwo, uh, sorry, Okonkwo, uh, anyone who's played lower league FMs in the last couple of years, you'll be very, very familiar with him, but he's gone to, where's he gone to? Bristol City for £200,000, so that is absolutely fine. Right, we are officially at game day, we do play Aston Villa, who are sitting 18th in the Premier League. And that's now that we've gone through all the transfers, now we'll be able to see some of these players in action for us today. So we have for our first 11, Pickford in goal, a back four of Mikalenko, Branthwaite, Tarkovsky and Patterson. I was playing with Ben Godfrey ahead of Tarkovsky, but Tarkovsky's hat-trick, 
he is in form. Branthway isn't. Do you know what? We're going to go with Godfrey. Godfrey and Tarkovsky at centre back with Patterson at right back. Onana at the base in the midfield with Dewsby Hall and Garner in the midfield. Danjuma left wing. McNeil on the right wing, back from injury. Beto is the man up front. Ducore is injured, but he is on the bench. He's actually only injured. Well, I say only injured. He injured his uh, lower arm. He fractured it. So he has actually been playing through that injury, but he just hasn't been starting very many games to try and save him. Uh, Harrison, he's just come back from injury. Calvert-Lewin, just come back from injury. What a shock, if you know from real life. Uh, Jao Virginia, our backup keeper. He's injured for two to three weeks. And Seamus Coleman, Deli Alley, are long-term absentees. They'll be out for another few weeks slash months. Um, standout players so far that we've had this season, I have to, first name that comes to mind, have to give credit to James Garner in central midfield. He has been a ball of dynamite since stepping into the team. It was originally uh, Ducore and Dewsbury Hall who were starting together. Then, of course, Ducore got injured, so Garner stepped in. And Garner has made the absolute most of it. Lewis Dobbin has, gave, has given the best that he could so far out on the right wing when McNeil was injured. But he is a like a League One quality player, so him against like some of the better teams in this league is probably not going to be the way to go. Which is why he's not playing against Aston Villa today, even though Aston Villa are currently sitting in 18th. Okay, first highlight. Oh my god, he just got turned there. What actually happens? First highlight after over half an hour, Villa do have a chance. Oh, just blocked and it has been half cleared. I hesitate to say it's been fully cleared. Chambers has a shot and it is wide, but Aston Villa looking very, very dangerous there. Who's that ball to? Thankfully, Mikolenko does pick that up. Let's see if we can carve ourselves out a chance. Dan Juma. Coming in field, I suppose that's what he's supposed to be. Beto is through here. Beto! Oh, it's off the bar. Oh, that's a great chance for him to score. I think that would have been his second Premier League goal, but a very good opportunity as we're closing in on half time. And we could have another chance here. Garner plays it out to Patterson. Impressive uh, at right back so far this season. Bursts through into the area. Plays it in. There is Garner. Oh, it's... oh, it was deflected off one of their players. I thought it was deflected off one of ours. But it is a corner. We've had some success from set pieces so far. There is Beto, but it is over the bar. We've had a couple of goals from corners so far. Tarkovsky scored two of his three goals against Burnley from corners. I think Godfrey has scored one as well. Uh, Calvert-Lewin, Branthwaite, they have all uh, scored from corners. We've created quite a few chances in that, for, well I say quite a few, we've had a couple of chances on highlights. Let's just see if we can stick one of them in the back of the net. Oh, they're very, very pleased about that team talk. That's good. But right now, looking even Stevens so far as oh, we just lose the ball there. We've just got the ball back, oh my goodness, and we've just given it away again. We're trying to lump the ball up to Beto because he is a big man up there. He's six foot four, something like that. As Villa are through here, and that was too easy. What on earth was our defence doing? They, they just cut in. One cut in on the left foot, and the goal just opened up for them. Let's have a look at this again. So that was Dendonka into Diaby. I mean, Diaby is a very good player for Villa. Yeah, just there. Who was that? Godfrey as well. Um, should I have gone with Branthwaite instead? Um, phew, not so sure. We might have. We're going to have to go much more attacking, which is what I've done here. And Onana just clears the ball. Dewsbury Hall holds it up. Oh, for goodness' sake, guys, get it on the floor. Thank you, Dewsbury Hall. Oh, Dan Juma just about gets it. He's got the ball there. Oh, it's deflected into the keeper's hands. Martinez scoops it up. What we are going to do is go a little bit more attacking. So Dewsby Hall is going to go into that attacking midfielder position. Onana steps up, but he's still going to be on ball winning midfielder on defend. Ghana stays as a central midfielder on support. So Onana is not on his own. Patterson, wing back on support. And I'm just thinking here, McNeil is looking very, very tired. So, Harrison is going to come on. This is the first time I'm going to be seeing him in a league game this season. Yeah, it's a very good first touch. Decent crossing. Okay, he can go as a winger. And <sighs> Beto's just been ineffective. So, Vardy will go on for Beto up front. We've still got Calvert-Lewin who can come on. And I'm looking at Decore. 
as well possibly in the next say 10-15 minutes perhaps. Right I have just tried to make a few changes tactically trying to press Aston Villa further up the pitch although I don't know how well that's going to go but I would obviously just try to step up. Oh my god Watkins with a very good chance there. Pickford thankfully made himself look very very big. We have a corner. Garner plays it into Godfrey. Oh it's off the bar come on. Oh it's just been cleared as far as Harrison on the right hand side. The highlight Peters out. We should be level at this point. Patterson just about away. Harrison. Oh, well played to Vardy. Vardy is through here. He's got some pace left about him. And he scored it. He's put it into the back of the net for his fifth goal of the season. The impact sub has done it. Harrison did very well to win the ball. Play Vardy through. And Vardy, even though he's lost some physical attributes, he's still got some pace. Who did he just beat there? Chambers. He just left Chambers for dead. Chips the goalkeeper. Back of the net. It is 1-1. And it is the very least that we have deserved from this match. In fact, we do still have some uh, substitutions to make. So, Ducore is going to come on. Yes, I know he's showing his injured. He's going to come on as the box-to-box. -box. We are kind of pushing on a little bit there. And uh, Godfrey is going to go off for Branthwaite. I was saying that Tarkovsky's had a poor game. You know what? Tarkovsky is going to go off for Branthwaite instead. Uh, how, to, how fast is Branthway actually? He's not that fast. So I'll tell you what, we are going to put him as cover in central defence. That way hopefully he'll just sweep up any balls that fall behind our defence. And we do currently have about five minutes left. Currently 1-1. One, one. Is there a winner for us preferably? Can't do anything more with the shouts. And I'm not really doing anything more with tactical changes. Although... Should I probably have here? Oh, just over the bar there for Villa from a corner. There are less than two minutes, less than a minute, and I think that's just going to be a draw. You know what? I know Aston Villa are behind us in the league. That's probably about as good as it was going to get for us, I think. Whoops. Uh, no gesture. Now you defended well, apart from Godfrey's not happy at that. Um, okay. Happy with your playmaking efforts, and you know what? Um... I'm proud of the equalising goal. Branthwaite and Godfrey lost focus or just were not happy with that team talk. Fantastic. That does leave us in 8th place after 7 games, which is better than Everton in real life. So, top stuff. And now we've got to go away to Liverpool. Predictions down in the comments how well that's going to go. Right, the moment of truth has arrived. We have to face the music at all. what will be a probably raucous Anfield for the Merseyside derby. So this is the 11 that we're going to be sending out. It's going to be Pickford in goal, a back four of Mikalenko, uh, Brent, uh, sorry, Branthwaite in for Ben Godfrey, Tarkovsky and Patterson at the back. Onana at the base of the midfield in an anchor role this time. Dewsbury Hall and Garner in central midfield. Danjuma and Harrison in for McNeil on the right-hand side of our attack. Jamie Vardy is in up front in place of Beto. Is Beto on the bench? Yes, he is. That's absolutely fine. Decore, he is fit now, but he just lacks match sharpness, so... Chances are he'll be coming on during this game at some point. So we'll see him. We will be seeing him. In fact, what I'm thinking, Gwei will probably be better here. I'm probably thinking Gwei might actually be better. So let's just have a quick look here. I mean, yes. Maybe he's got more strength as Onana. Gwei actually has less strength. But he's better in the tackle. I'm going to go with the experience on this one. And that will be Gwei at the base of the midfield. Behind Dewsbury Hall and Garner. Let's just see how well that goes. I mean, Liverpool are going to be very, very, very strong. To the point even the board are expecting a defeat. The fans are just hoping for a draw. Even I think that's very optimistic. But let's just go and see how this plays out. As Anfield is full to the rafters. Yeah, granted, it doesn't look like Anfield, but none of these stadiums do. I mean, you haven't seen... No, you have seen Goodison Park now in the last match. Even you'll be able to say, that does not look like anything like Goodison Park. Here's hoping the stadiums will start to look a bit better for FM25 when they switch to the new match engine, of course, with Unity. 
but that will remain to be seen as Liverpool have themselves a corner after just four minutes. Good God, so it's... They're starting already, he's Van Dijk. No one's stopping him. I need to have a look at my set pieces again properly. I realised before I hit record, I haven't actually fully set up like my throw-ins, my free kicks. So we've had some success from free kicks already. It's just been corners. That's all I've ever looked at. It's just corners. And that's not going to get us through an entire season. I know that. As Liverpool, you can see from the match momentum on the right-hand side here, Liverpool are just dominating. We've had our period here. That little blue, that's us. We've had our little period. That's about it. I mean, this month is going to be torrid for us anyway. We've faced Villa, obviously, in the last match. We've got Liverpool now. Uh, I've got to play, I think, Manchester United. I've got to play Arsenal. And then I've got to play Newcastle in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back league games after this. I just hope we have some good dynamics left coming out of this. Because we, we, we started the season so well. I mean, come on. Uh, they've thankfully very, very fired up after that team talk at halftime. Let's see if that does anything for them. Hooray! Yeah, there's a highlight, but it's not for us. We've seen little of the ball. I don't think... I'm surprised if... I'll be surprised if we haven't actually touched the ball at all. That actually looks offside from Salah. And I hope it is, because Salah seems to score against Everton every single time. Uh, referee, come on. Oh, it's on. How is that on? Who played him on? Come on, let's have a look. Oh, it's this idiot, isn't it? No. Oh, it was him. Who was that? Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky just didn't step up. All you needed to do was step up, man. That's all you needed to do. Let's make a couple of changes. It's been nearly an hour. Uh, Ghana, no, Dewsbury Hall is knackered, so Decore is going to come on. Uh, Patterson is on a yellow card and having a torrid time, so Ben Godfrey is going to come on at right back. Screw it, just go and support. <laughs> why, why not? Just why not? Um, who else could we actually bring on? Harrison, no, nobody's actually playing particularly well. Vardy's definitely not playing well, so Beto is going to come on up front. Would it have made a difference if I played Jamie Vardy as an advanced forward? Probably not. Probably not on this day. This day is not a day that we were going to take on Liverpool at Anfield. We do. Uh, Dan Juma's taken a knock, so I think that means, yeah, McNeil has come on for Dan Juma on that left-hand side. We do play Liverpool in the Merseyside derby at... Goodison Park, if I can remember what ground we play at, uh, at the end of December. So maybe I'll bring back from that, for that. We'll see just how much uh, we've done in the meantime, in terms of results, because we've got a lot of games coming up before then. Manchester City is going to be one of them. That's such a sloppy pass, come on. Uh, just to take him out. Just absolutely take him out. Oh, come on. Every highlight they've had, they've scored. There's only literally, I think there's only been three highlights in this whole game. They've just scored all three. I mean, as far as Manchester City and Liverpool go, FM shows zero mercy when you play them. But then we, we don't have the players to be taking on these teams. The only reason I'm showing this game is because it is the Merseyside derby. That's the only reason, nothing more, nothing less. Even when we have the ball, we're just going to give it away. So take the loss, move on. And I've now got to get through a torrid run. Even as underdogs, losing to our rivals is bitter, even at their home ground. As you can see, you probably saw just from the league table there, uh, Manchester City running away with the league at the moment, obviously. That's nothing new. Hang on a minute. They've got how much goal difference? What have they been doing to teams? Can I just have a look at this? Oh my gosh. Oh god, they slapped Nottingham Forest 9-1. My goodness, how many goals were scored? By Har Harland scored 5. Burnley got destroyed 5-1. Wolves 4-1. Palace 8-0. Who's, let me guess, Harland's the leading scorer. He scored 17 in 8 games. 17 league goals in eight games. That's obscene. It's 24 in 11 down here. I'm not coming back from the Man City game because you'll see me cry. 
What the heck? That's just insane. Right, luckily we're not chasing Man City this season. We're nowhere near their level. We're not even Champions League level, realistically. What we are going to do, we're going to get a bunch of games under our belts. I'm probably looking at the end of December coming back. Play Liverpool at home. Why not? Maybe we'll get lucky there. If not, then maybe January transfer market. But otherwise, the only way we're realistically going to be competitive with any of the teams in the top half of the league is if we get some transfers under our belt in January now that the real life stuff has happened. Let's see what happens. Uh, sorry, let's see what happens, especially as we've only got 1.3 million in the transfer budget. We're within our wage budget though, so that's some good news, right? If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the upcoming episodes of the FM24 Early Access here at Everton. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all for your support on the series so far. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. I love football managers sometimes.